things I was specifically going to say on this panel is that I'm not funny unless I'm writing it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're actually live now. Excellent. Um, so I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight for the lead up to the 2022, unfortunately, virtual Coastal Magic Convention. Um, tonight's discussion is A Funny Thing Happened. It's about the comedy and the stories we love. And tonight we are chatting with Kate Ballinger, Eric Asher, and Melanie Johnson. Um, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Laura. I am, I guess, officially now a former blogger, um, but I also copy edit, uh, freelance copy edit. So I still am involved in the book world, but I want to let each of these fabulous people introduce themselves to you and tell you a little bit about the things that they write. And we'll start with Eric. Oh, yeah. Um, so no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric Asher, obviously. And I write uh, young adult steampunk and adult urban fantasy are probably the two things that I'm most known for. Um, yeah, that's about it. Kate, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Kate Ballinger, and I write sexy uh, paranormal romance, and most of my readers know me for my Seven Range Shifter series, Cowboys Meets Werewolves. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Excellent. And Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie Johnson. I write mostly contemporary romance and romantic comedies, and... I don't know, fun, flirty, you know, if you're looking for uh, stories that feature uh, badass groups of besties, you know, you're in a good place. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here a little bit, guys. Why do you think you were selected for this panel? Are, do you tell jokes in your books? Are your jokes, are your books all funny? Are they just interspersed with humor to break up tension? What, what makes you qualified to be on this panel? <laughs> um, Kate. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. So I've got an answer to this one. So, I mean, there is humor like interspersed throughout my books to like cut the tension sort of thing because like, since I write um, on the darker side of paranormal romance, like, there can be some really like dark, uh, violent parts. I think you might hear my kids screaming in the background. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I think specifically, I was chosen to be on this panel because my latest um, one, Wild Cowboy Wolf, that's the fifth in my Seven Rain Shifter series. Um, the hero's a total funny guy. And um, he's been set up as like the kind of class clown of the gray wolf pack that I write about in that series um, throughout the earlier books. And so we finally got his story in my last release. And so um, it was fun to kind of play with the outward funny side guy um, persona he gives to everyone and what's actually going on underneath all the funny. So. Melanie, you wanna go next? Uh, well, I write romantic comedy. It's right in the name. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, so I would guess like I do, I, I've had so many reviews and readers reach out who talk about how they're reading my book and they're laughing so hard. Like their spouse is like, what are you reading? Or their kids are. So um, I think that's, that is like the best part of, of that, knowing that I've brought a laugh to someone's day, especially now, um, you know, is, is, is just, it's the best part of this. Yeah. Funny moments to escape into. <laughs> Excellent. Eric? Uh, I think it depends on who you ask. Um, some people will say I have a terrible sense of humor and have no idea what's funny and couldn't write a funny scene if my life depended on it. Thank you, Amazon reviewer. Um, <laughs> But, How did I know that's what you were quoting? That's so weird. It was you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do try to infuse a lot of humor in my books, um, especially my urban fantasy stuff, because urban fantasy can get pretty dark. So it's nice to lighten things up when something gets really heavy. Although every now and then I will write a heavy story and I kind of forget to put enough humor in. And I'll, I'll get messages from my readers that are like, why is this so dark? <laughs> Where is this? It's like, ah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. 
do you make it up to them in the next book? Usually, usually. U usually. Like my, uh -huh. next, my next book is about some pretty amusing garden gnomes. So <laughs> yeah. that should make it up. <laughs> I mean, that's either really funny or terrifying. I'm not sure which. There's not really much in between for that. Yeah, we both. <laughs> <laughs> People will laugh because they're like slightly afraid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you think that you are a funny person in general? Or if not, how do you incorporate that humor into your books? Um, and we'll start with Melanie. Um, so I am also an actress, a theater person, theater major, things like that. And one of the, it's a weird dichotomy because one of the things we learned very early on in theater is that if you find yourself hilarious, the audience probably won't. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, if you're so busy, like laughing at yourself, like that's not like, so oftentimes trying to be funny is, is it does, it fall, it falls flat. It doesn't work. So I think the humor has to come organically and, um, so for me, um, that it, I, I have definitely stolen moments from my own life and put them in my books, like moments that I found particularly amusing. Um, but also just like letting the characters play and letting their own natural like funniness come out. I think, um, Kate, you're talking about your hero being a, you know, kind of a funny guy and kind of those like, so like if you can, those are, so for me, I think that the most important part is making sure it's organic and making sure it is like, um, you know, intuitive to the characters and that the humor matches who they are. So I think with Eric, you know, talking about being kind of, you know, maybe the more darker sense of humor or off color sense of humor where people are like, wait, wait, one a minute, but it really works, works for your characters, works for your personality. And I think that's what's most important. Eric, you wanna go next? Sure. Um, so I, I, I get it, it kind of depends on who you ask because I'm, I'm very overly fond of dad jokes and like that that's kind of the sense of humor in my books is there's a lot of dad jokes and like sure dad, some of them right? dad. Dad. yeah yeah <laughs> well that too because he is a necromancer so <laughs> um and, and you know you've got like three thousand year old fairies telling like the worst stupidest dad joke you can imagine so <laughs> they think they're hilarious and it's and kind of going back to what Melanie was saying, it's very forced, but it's intentionally forced right, to be that is different, yeah. Incredibly awkward. And some it, it really clicks with some people, and some people are just like, What am I reading? <laughs> so yeah, it's it's fun. I don't know that people would necessarily say I'm humorous myself. Um, unless they like dad jokes a lot, then it, it, probably our sense of humor will jive. <laughs> hey. um, I agree with Melanie in that like if it, it you force it too hard, like not in the way that Eric's saying where it's intentionally forced, but like if you're trying to force it not in, like in an unironic way, <laughs> like it can come across very easily as like too slapsticky or like not funny. Um, so humor can kind of be difficult to write in that way. And it really does have to be organic and like, and for me, very specific to the character. Cause I have a lot, uh, like I write primarily like alpha heroes, right? So some of them are very humorless, but then other ones are like total goofballs. So it really just depends on the character. But for me, uh, I don't know that anyone would necessarily call me funny. I mean, like, I feel like I'm one of those people that I come up with funny jokes, like maybe like two minutes after the fact of like when I could have said something. So like, that's why I'm funnier in my books. <laughs> same, same. I'm always like, man, that would have been perfect. Right? Like, like oh, why didn't I say this when I had the mm -hmm. chance? <laughs> I, I, I will say I've, I've sat by Kate at a few book signings and she's definitely funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I am then. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's not something that people tell me about myself often. So like, you know, I haven't absorbed it into my self identity that like I I'm good at being funny. I guess <laughs> it would be something kind of odd for someone to just come up and be like, "You're really funny," and it's like, "What do you mean by that? Is this a good thing?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <look>. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you 
do you mean? <laughs> In what way? <laughs> We've got a few um, comments from the peanut gallery here. Um, Crystal says, Vesic makes me laugh. So you're at least funny to one person, Eric. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Jody says, Melanie, I definitely laughed out loud reading your Sometimes in Love series. Um, and DeLorean says, and this actually leads into my next question pretty well. Um, DeLorean says, I love the humor that is almost on accident, the throwaway comments or inside jokes. So that kind of, I mean, I, I guess leads me to my next question in a roundabout way. Um, has there, and there, have you ever been told by a reader that something you wrote was hilarious that you definitely did not intend to be funny? And if so if you can think about what it was and kind of explain the situation i know that's really putting you on the spot remember this one book you wrote one time um, <laughs> so i'll let whoever wants to go first on that one if you can think of something that's a tricky one like trying to think of something that like you definitely did not intend for it to be funny and readers are like that's hilarious and it's like hmm or something that you thought was, oh, this will only be funny to me. And a reader commented that they also found it funny. I don't know that I've had anything where like the reader found it like hilarious and I wasn't necessarily in intending it completely. I will say when I turned in the very first book in the Seven Rain Shifter series to my editor, this is Cowboy Wolf Trouble, I, the the hero's like horse right blackjack like I meant for him to be like kind of mildly humorous like maybe just like a touch of joke here and there but my editor thought that like his horse was just hilarious right to the point that she was like you have to put like a funny animal in each book in this series right and like and and my readers will know yes there's like this funny animal companion usually in each book in the seven rain shifter series and it's not always the horse spoiler alert um <laughs> so like so that's kind of how that was born so i mean my editor isn't really like a reader per se but she was like reading this book for the first time and was like no that was so so funny and i was like oh i thought it was a little funny but like she was she was way more into it than i thought she was going to be <laughs> horses yeah, have, have a lot of personality so they i can they that's do. true it, and I have gotten reader comments where they're like, horses would never behave like this. And I'm like, clearly you've never been around a horse. <laughs> like. That's awesome. Um, I, I have a character that, uh, my main character in my urban fantasy series is a necromancer. And when he was a kid, I, I had him have various mishaps, shall, shall we say, while he was growing up. And one of them was he took the soul of a dead pirate and stuffed it into a dead parrot and kind of reanimated this like half decayed parrot that's like walking around and squawking at people, except now it's also cursing at people at great length. <laughs> and like, when I was writing it, I was like, this is kind of funny. And like people love that character so much. Like they're always like, why isn't Greybeard and more stuff? Like you need the bird in there. And then to make it even worse, my narrator, when he was first doing it, decided to come up with this voice that instead of just talking like a reincarnated, you know, dead pirate, he's like, no, no, he still needs to squawk. So like at the end of various sentences randomly, he just like, and just, <laughs> it's the best I'm dying because ever. the book I just finished writing and turned into my editor has a foul mouthed cockatoo. That's that awesome. lives in a funeral home. <laughs> That's awesome. And it has an Irish accent. Love it. <laughs> Anyone that says animals don't have personality have clearly never been around a lot of animals. I think that's a great way to answer humor into any series. Yeah. Um, I, I worked with animals for a long time and worked with a bird who uh, hated people with red color to their hair. Uh-oh. Oh no, <laughs> just that bird did not like you. <laughs> nope, loved every like would cuddle other people, try to rip my face off. Whatever, it's fine. Um, I'm not still bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 
I forgot where we were. Did everybody answer that question? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't come. We're I good. Was to think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I apparently am easily sidetracked today. Um, <laughs> so, reader question What is one of your best jokes? Either one in your books or one you personally find funny and want to share? Mm. <laughs> I've wow. never been one to be like, like a joke teller. <laughs> like, to yeah. <laughs> I did buy so my youngest daughter um is in eighth grade and so I have bought like this box of like little jokes to put in her lunch every day and most of them are just absolutely terrible (laughs) they're all really punny you know so I was trying to think of any of that I recently and sometimes I'll because I'll read them before I put them in her lunch and I'll be like ha 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 or this is really bad (laughs) That's really cute though. Like I love that idea. Yeah. Just something, you know. Yeah. I'm kind of like Eric. I think all the like one-liner jokes that I know are like dad jokes that I hear from my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not really like, you know, to me anyway. <laughs> like he tells them to me all the time and like we kind of have a chuckle, but they're really like funny just because they're not funny. <laughs> like so most of my situations, like in my books and stuff, are their situational like humor, right? Rather than like a one-liner of sorts. I mean, I the hero of Wild Cowboy Wolf does wear lots of like funny t-shirts is another one that like that's one of his things is like he'll wear shirts that are like perfect for that moment and like have, you know, something really like lewd usually on them. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the inappropriate humor, like the dirty jokes. It doesn't matter how old I get. I'm going to be 90 sitting in a nursing home and still think that shit's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't matter. All right. If you think of a joke before we are done with this panel, please just raise your hand and and toss it out there. Like, come better prepared for this. Like, we should. It's okay. We would have to have jokes. (laughs) It's okay. I mean, if we need one later, I've got a dad joke that I always keep in the back of my mind because it's from my actual dad. I, it's in my pocket from my actual father. Anyway, um, another question from the viewers. This is from Crystal. Do you ever think of something funny that would have worked in a scene after it's completed? I think I think with every everything you write, like after it's done, turned in, what or 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 out, like I think there's always like this like moment of oh I could have done X Y or Z. I think it's inevitable, you know, that there's these moments where you're like oh missed opportunity. I am I am one of those authors that like when edits are done, I am not gonna read through that book again. Mm -mm. Like I have released it off into the world. Like I've taken the notes I need to for my series Bible and like I'm never gonna look at it again unless I have to under duress because I'm done with that book. (laughs) So (laughs) and I think that's in part because like and I know a lot of writers probably feel this way is that like to us there's always errors and there's always parts that can be better even if there's not like actual typos or actual plot holes right like we always like it's never as good as what we envision in our head and so like you eventually just have to get to a point where you're willing to let it go and let it out into the world and once I'm at that point I'm like nope don't want to look at it again Sometimes uh, my early reader team who are like hunting for typos and stuff will come back and be like, well, why didn't they do such and such or so-and-so? And And sometimes they have like amazing ideas and I will go back and edit and change something before it goes to print and into audiobook production. Other times I'll be on panels with other urban fantasy authors or whatever genre I happen to be writing and they will have an amazing answer (laughs) or suggestion after I like tell them stories. So uh, I was on a panel with uh, Jim Butcher and some other urban fantasy folks, and I was telling the Greybeard story. And Jim kind of interrupts me and looks over at me. He's like, well, does the parrot have a peg leg? And I'm like, that (laughs) is the best idea ever. So 
obviously he didn't at the time but like by the end of the next book his leg had been blown off and he yes was now walking around with a peg leg <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was he, did he name his peg leg and if so he should refer to it as jim uh, he has not Ooh. but that that That's might have to happen <laughs> Or you, yeah, or Butch, you know, if you don't want to like pull on. Yeah. <laughs> butch might be Butch might be better. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good name. <laughs> uh, I'm here for all the animal antics, like seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and I think animals are one of like the easiest ways that you can create humor like in a story. Animals or like kids doing out really outlandish things can be funny very easily i think that's what happened with my rom-coms like the one thorough line between them is that they have they both have feature animals and i think that that was again like knowing going into writing these romantic comedies so like in too good to be real we have a pair of um uh kleptomaniac seagulls and <laughs> And, and then and and, cor and more corgis than you can like a cornucopia of corgis and then like I said the one I just finished has the the uh, foul mouth cockatoo and then there's a hedgehog involved so yeah like because it is it is so it is such a so there's so much room for for that humor to, to come into play so yeah definitely totally off topic but have you seen the video of a pelican trying to eat a capybara which, if you don't know, capybaras are like the world's largest rodent. They're like just yeah, no, I have not. I, I I've seen lots of video clips of like seagulls walking into shops and stealing things and walking out, but I've not. Yeah. Seen it. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> but not not that. Google that one. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would. Oh, it can't. It can't hurt it. I mean the capybaras are just so huge. Yeah, and the capybara is completely unbothered. Oh, the just pelican's like, trying to eat it, and he's just like, whatevs. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Capybara don't care about anything, man. I only know what a capybara is because of, like, Dora and Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want some as pets. I want some. Me too. I want some of, like, most things as pets, Laura. <laughs> How dare you call me out? It's very rude. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those people that used to, like the things just come home with you <laughs> um our cat that we have now was a feral uh we've been catching the ferals in our neighborhood and and doing the tnr program and uh so we caught him got him fixed released him and then about two weeks later he was like nope i live here now Aww. just walked in our house so i was like you oh okay <laughs> i guess we have a cat Okay, you added the link to your copy borough video so now <laughs> to see it. oh gosh oh yeah okay yeah the link in the to the uh video is now in the comment section of this video so <laughs> all right <laughs> and we have lost all of our viewers no i'm just kidding um jennifer said the peg name peg leg named jim is awesome so <laughs> jennifer says you have to do it um so is there an author or character that you turn to when you need something funny like if you know i i need to read something funny and i know this person or this character is always hilarious this is also a reader uh question so I recently started digging into uh, the backlist of Alexis Hall after I read um, his MM contemporary romance uh, boyfriend material, which was like a perfect mixture of like laugh out loud, hilarious rom-com, but also like broke my heart and made me cry at the end. <laughs> So like it was beautiful and like now he's my go-to author for humor stuff and Tessa Dare also writes some really really funny historicals so I love her books for that reason as well like The Duchess Seal is my favorite of hers and that like made me laugh so hard. 
I finally read my first Tessa Dare over winter break and it was the one with the the lamb that they named dinner like for <laughs> 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 animal humor yes <laughs> it was yeah, super- she does animal humor well <laughs> Yeah, I um I don't know if I like go to an all like oh I need humor I need to go read something funny I don't know if I necessarily do that per se but I do love Jennifer Cruzy like she is guaranteed to make me laugh her you know she's um her all any of her books the humor um and the character situations are always a little bit bonkers and lots of fun there's also not um fiction per se but um the author of Hyperbole and a Half. She also had a, a, a very popular website, Ali Roche, I think is her last name. Um, she did like kind of like cartoon type of things. And uh, she is, I guess if I just need to laugh in general, like if I'm just having a bad day and I just need to laugh, Hyperbole and a Half, her material is just, it's hilarious. Ali Broche, she has, um, if you want to talk about Googling something funny, if you Google the PARP, P-A-R-P story, from Allie Broche or the um, the God of Cake is another one <laughs> that will just um, this just makes my day. Um, Not writing this down at all. So for like old school stuff, I really enjoy Douglas Adams for humor, like that kind of dry British, just love it. Um, for more modern stuff, urban fantasy related, I really like John Hartness's Bubba the Monster Hunter stuff, which um, I write in his universe. I write in the Bubbaverse and for my Mason Dixon story. <laughs> and I, I had to, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I had to read John's stuff uh, to do research on that world. And it was just like, okay, this is absolutely hilarious. Um, for rom-com type things, I really enjoy Max Monroe. Like uh, they are a writing pair and they are hilarious. Like any of their books like pick up any of them and they're a riot um yeah those are probably my three big ones just for humor these days all right oh sorry i got distracted again on reading all these uh questions and comments (laughs) um how do you know or how can you tell when where the line is between being funny and just going overboard (laughs) or does it matter depending like depending on the genre that you're writing in does that change when my reviews come in (laughs) (laughs) i think this this maybe everyone finds different things funny so like the reviews uh, you just gotta like some people are gonna be like this sucks and people like i love it or this was it's just you know, yeah, you can't, you can't trust the reviews for what's funny and what's not funny because everyone has their own opinions. This is a, in theater, the same thing. There's always this like, where, where is that line? Where does it become too much? And, you know, it's always, if, as a director, I was always like, I'd rather have you go way out there as far as you want to take it because I can always pull you back, but I can't push you forward. So I think there are times when I'm writing something where I definitely take it way too far. And I definitely like, like too much too much and then that's you know in edits either through myself or more likely through my editor my beta readers who can see outside of myself what are like okay yeah you maybe just needed like let's roll this back a little bit you know you've taken you take the joke is done the joke is done it's time to move on (laughs) yeah yeah I agree with Eric's comment about the reviewers <laughs> like I find out from them but also yeah like Melanie said my editor too like but I will say the times when my editor has been like no 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 pull back I I still don't agree with those times but I listened to her <laughs> <laughs> just to be safe I listened to her but I I still wish I had gone full throttle with those jokes <laughs> Throw them up I on think, your website think, as a deleted I think scene. I think I need to. I think I need to. <laughs> like bonus material. Like you could like the joke that went too far, like you in yeah. your newsletter. Like take it, <laughs> like, take it there. <laughs> I honestly like anything that anyone like trashes in a review, like like five reviews later, someone's gonna love those exact same things. So that's just, true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, for me, um, probably the most overboard one made it into one of my early books 
Um, do you have you all heard the like the urban legend about like if you feed a pigeon rice, it'll explode? Like that's why they can't throw rice at wedding. Lines, like Alka Seltzer or something is what I've heard. Like yeah. why you're feeding a pigeon Alka Seltzer, I don't know, but <laughs> well, the, the rice thing was like a huge urban legend in my family. So I, I think it's a Missouri that, thing. It, it might just be a Missouri thing, yeah. <laughs> and uh so I took that and ran with it for my necromancer story. It's like I needed I needed something to like demonstrate how like this individual looks at death in a very different way than a normal person. So like to save a bunch of humans, he blows up a whole lot of pigeons at a wedding in like the most horrible way possible by like magicking the rice so that they all explode. Um, and it's it's gory, it's awful, it it's it's full of really hilarious popping noises. And it's it was way over the top way over the top and like some people were like this is the most disgusting thing i've ever read and like please do more <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my lord i was like that was too far but yeah i i still get more more messages about that than anything else positive and negative and it was just like yeah that was probably on the line <laughs> So exploding pigeons is Eric's line. Got it. Exploding yep. pigeons at a wedding. <laughs> and I love animals. I'm just saying. I have not <laughs> you tried to add like a little, note, like a little disclaimer in the book. No <laughs> actual <laughs> pigeons were harmed in the yeah. wedding. <laughs> no pigeons were harmed in the making of this book, I promise. <laughs> exactly. Grogu has destroyed way more frogs than I have destroyed pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, so speaking of lines there, is there a line, like, or is there a certain situation that you know you would never make a joke about? Yes. I know this gets a little bit more serious, but some people don't have lines, <laughs> so I'm curious what yours are, if you would care to share, or if not, that's okay too. I will never make a joke that, uh, marginalizes anyone or uh, pokes fun at any marginalized identity, whether it be BIPOC peoples or, you know, LGBTQ plus groups or any marginalized group, I tend to think that's cheap humor. And so, yeah, not gonna do it. That's a hard line for me. Yeah, I think, I think like you said, marginalized or that kind of like, I, you will never find me, uh, find a fat joke anywhere in any of my books. Mm -hmm. Like I, the TV series, How I Met Your Mother, I really enjoyed, but the amount of like, <clears throat> like hum humor at the expense of, of fat people was ridiculous. Like it really turned me off of a show I otherwise enjoyed because yeah. it was, like you said, it's cheap, it was easy and it was just, you know, so you will never find that in my books ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I think it depends also on like who's telling the story. Um, so th there's certainly things that I would never tell jokes about, but I would never say that like no one should ever make a joke about this because like it's not my place to tell someone what their life experience is and what they've gone through and what how they may be dealing with something or processing something through their humor so th certainly there's there's things that I would never joke about but I, I mean if someone needs that in their story or needs that to help process something that they've dealt with in their life then you know I'm all for it. I got really heavy really quick. I'm sorry I asked that question. <laughs> I apologize. No, I um, well, I mean, the book that I just finished, the hero's family owns a funeral home and the couple meets over a corpse. So having to like find that line of what, and so their sense of humor is automatically already just a little bit different because they deal with death on a daily basis. They deal with the, all of the, realities of death and corpses and bodies and all of those things so it was like finding like how you can take a subject that is not intuitively funny and there plus the family's Irish and the Irish already have a very different you know their their humor is often very dark to begin with so um it was figuring out yeah so like trying to figure out like what you know what I was comfortable with and and how that might play out so yeah well, and I think there's space for humor to get dark very quickly. Um, 
And some of what I was trying to play with in writing that sort of funny guy, um, like comedic hero in Wild Cowboy Wolf was kind of the idea of like, well, what does the humor hide? Because like the humor is his outward persona that he almost uses not, I mean, I don't want to say he uses it to push people away, but like he uses it to deflect for more serious things that are laying underneath which I think is probably true of a lot of professional comics and they will tell you as such and like you know their their own personal life discussions right like humor can be used to hide some really dark stuff well not just hide too I think deal with yeah you know yep. I'm I am 100% that person that will make jokes at like funerals and things especially if it's the closer I am to the person who passed like yeah so I know that's how I process death and awful topics and things. So I, I agree that there's definitely a place for humor in just about any situation, but, you know, was kind of curious about what, what your lines were, what you yeah. would and would not right, joke and I think about. Those lines are personal as well. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you're saying like whatever your personal journey is and what you might find as a as a way to, to like deal with something through humor you know someone else might find it offensive if you're making a bunch of cancer jokes but for that person who's writing it like they need that they need that kind of you know yeah so. well we got some supportive comments on that question and your guys's answers melissa says wonderful comments on the hard lines and crystal says i think that was a great question and well answered all right i feel a little bit better about taking a funny topic and making it a little more serious <laughs> um, right we're just we're ending and scene um so would you say that comedy is your go-to genre when you're consuming media like movies or books or tv shows or no <laughs> no <laughs> I I think I'm hard to impress when it comes to like humor stuff like like a lot of people will recommend like certain books to me and most often for me like as a romance writer it's rom-coms right and half the time I'm like okay eh it wasn't that funny right like move on to the next one and then like so it's rare that I find one that like really makes me like full-on belly laugh um and I say this though right and right now I'm like I've been watching Mrs. Maisel right like which is totally hilarious so I do watch comedy stuff right but like it's not my go-to genre um I tend to go darker with like you know very dark gritty dramas uh darker fantasy stuff paranormal right um so dark stuff tends to be my, more my wheelhouse, but like occasionally if I find something that is like exceptionally hilarious, yeah, I will, I will watch or read comedy. <laughs> so I, dry witty, I think is, is for me like situational. So, so everyone, this is, Shit's Creek has not been out forever and it's, you know, it's done its run. When it first came out, I had a lot of author friends telling me how much they loved it and how funny it was and how great it was. And I was like, mm. and then I finally, when I first started it, even like the first couple episodes, I was still like, uh, but then it, I got so invested in the characters. Yeah. So as far as like laugh out loud moments, I have not laughed so hard on a show than I have at Schitt's Creek, like it like consistently over time. And it's always these very kind of, the, the laughs come from the, the characters and how they deal with things. They're not like, it's not like big, I mean, yes, there's sometimes there's big slapsticky moments, no question, but there's a lot of these kind of very um, punny, like reactions to each other and how they handle each other that, so that, that, that show, I think I've never, I have not laughed as much as I, in fact, I laughed so hard at that show. My husband's like, what are you laughing at? And I ended up watching it again. We did the whole thing again where he could watch it too. It and then so uh, there's another one that I recently watched called The Great. It's based on Catherine the Great. And that is on Hulu. And that's another one of very witty, unique um, humor that comes from this the characters in the situation. So if you haven't seen uh, the great I recommend that one and there's definitely some dark humor in there <laughs> like some dark situations there so I, I guess, yeah sorry I was just gonna say I guess my go-to is yes humor I, I'm not going for the dark stuff <laughs> go ahead Eric Eric's uh, gonna say he goes for dark stuff too I'm <laughs> yeah yeah I, I really enjoy like dark fantasy and whatnot like 
dark fantasy, high fantasy, stuff like The Witcher. Um, yeah. And, okay, uh, I, the, I, yeah, I'm totally into The Witcher for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm in for it, in it for the plot, but also, <laughs> but also the, the thighs, thing. let's be honest. <laughs> Please tell me you just said the thighs. I did say the thighs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the grunting. We can't forget the grunting. <laughs> Sorry, Eric, Eric, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Humor-wise, though, like shows like The Office, especially when I was still working in like corporate America, like that show was just the yeah. best. I mean, it's like how how can you beat it like they just nail so much stuff about like day-to-day -day office life but in like the worst most hilarious way possible it's like you know a five or six season long dad joke and i'm here for it <laughs> see i can't i don't know i can't get into things like that because I have also worked in corporate America. And so like they're making fun of things that I've had to personally deal with that oh, yeah. were not funny oh, <laughs> at <no>. the time. <laughs> so I have a hard time like enjoying that because then I think back to the real thing and I get mad all over again. So <laughs> along the lines of the office, if you, if you all remember the old movie Office Space. Oh uh, yeah. So that with the red stapler, like that was that was my big thing when I was quitting corporate America is like I the only thing I left on my desk was one of those red staplers, one of those red swing lines. It was just like my <laughs> note. Did we anybody get it? Office, I just actually referenced office space the other day because we have these dog gates. And speaking of dark humor, we have our my dog is she's getting up in years and we're starting to have the conversations of when we have to, you know, but we have all these gates now because we have to keep her contained to certain areas. And I'm a, like, they're a pain in the in the butt. And I was like, as soon as this happens, I'm going office space on that gate. <laughs> Could take it in yep. the backyard of the baseball bat. But that's <laughs> we also made jokes. That we a couple. I mean, we fostered a lot of old dogs, so we had a lot of like end of life jokes in our house. So it was it was kind of a morbid place to be for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now. <laughs> yes. All right, I man. I mean, it happens, but uh, so that was me relating to you. I get it. <laughs> And again, like dealing with a situation that's difficult and sad and hard with humor. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a comment on Chits Creek saying that it does take a bit of growing on you, but that it's so good. It does. It really, for me, anyway, I mean, maybe not everyone, but definitely took 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 some time. And then once, and I, if it hadn't been for like people whose opinion I'd really trusted being like, oh, it then, yeah. So I, I agree with you on that one, Melanie. I think the whole first season, it was like, I felt like it was almost like cringe humor, like you were supposed to be laughing, right? But I was so horrified at what the characters were doing in the situations that I was like, I just can't, I can't and laugh. They're it's all like, incredibly unlikable people, but like that's yes. part of the beauty of it is that they, you want to talk about watching something for character growth, for an yes. arc, development. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And, and like, and, and I think I felt like that the whole first season, but my husband was like, everybody says we need to keep watching. We need to keep watching. So, <laughs> so like, we kept watching. And then of course it was very funny as the characters grew and changed. But like in the beginning, I was just like, this is a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I am one of the seven people in the entire world that's never watched it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. You would yeah. like it if you can get past the first yeah. season, Laura. You can't, you can't watch it all. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got another comment. Somebody agreeing with you, Kate, about reading rom coms. I get nervous reading a rom com because I go into it expecting to be wowed, but I am also super easily wowed, so it usually works out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the people who are super easily wowed. Come to me. Come right. to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. I just, I'm so sorry. I'm very distracted tonight, guys. Um, so is there, 
do you have any tips for somebody who's trying to add more comedy to their books um, that are maybe aren't naturally funny with situational humor or the you know the dark jokes or whatever whatever their story needs any tips or tricks that you have to add more humor to their books I think the first question would be to ask why like they have to like I mean why do they feel they need it and why they're like why they're in that scene or why they're in that moment um you have to you have to know the why um Mm -hmm. And I think once you have that, you can start to, to build from there. Um, and like I said, when I'm, if I'm stuck, like I, it, it never fails to kind of just pull from my own life. So like <laughs> if you, if you can't think of anything, you know, just, just, you know, steal something from your own life. I like what Melanie said. The, the question of why I think is a good one because, uh, and and I want to kind of somehow relate this to the comment you said, Laura, that somebody said with rom-coms, they always go into it a little bit worried, right? Like, is it going to be funny sort of thing? And I think this in some ways is an error that the publishing industry has made, like in that they've taken a lot of contemporary romances and started marketing them as rom-coms, right? And like, is something actually a rom-com or is it a contemporary romance? And it's hard for readers to tell. And and I think doing that, like, it's it's kind of a similar thing. Like, why do we have to take these contemporary romances that aren't supposed to be funny and like try to call them rom-coms when they're not, when the intention was not that they were supposed to be a rom-com, right? Like, like it, I think that, I think if humor comes to you naturally in your writing, like, you know, then great, like run with it. And if you need to try to amp it up, but if you're struggling with, you know, being humorous, then the question is like, well, why do you have to be right? Like who's telling you, you have to do this. Like, it's probably not your readers, right? Like. (laughs) Have I mentioned dad jokes yet? Yeah, tell, tell me more. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like, find a book that you you yourself find entertaining and funny. Uh, if you're really determined on putting humor into your stories, like, find a find a book that you consider really funny, and like, study how the author pulled that off, and like, how they inserted the jokes, how the characters reacted, if they reacted at all um like some of my early stuff like my characters reacted way too much to jokes and people were like oh you're just trying to tell us that that was a joke and that's why you're not funny and it's like well actually I was just a new writer and I didn't realize that I was putting too much detail in but sure have it your way um I'm not bitter about that at all though I can tell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah it just like really dig into something that you you yourself find entertaining and kind of dissect how it works and why it works. Speaking of humor, like like Star Wars, like I because I was in my favorite lines, like there's like they they like the way that like those like just kind of little one off like lines like that are all indicative of the actual characters and like I, I mean I find them all like hilarious, but that's just me. <laughs> you know but like it could be in these tense moments and and they say something that's just so funny you know well and I think like any element of craft like there's resources like I remember and don't quote me on like who this person was or where it is but like so I was listening to uh Mark Dawson's self-publishing podcast at one point and he had um James Blatch his interviewer right um had somebody on and they were he had previously written for the onion right he was like one of the founding members and like if you're not familiar with the onion it's a satirical like newspaper right it's very funny look it up um but he was on there talking about how to write humor and he had a whole book right that he had written on how to write humor and like and I want to read this book at some point I still haven't gotten around to it but it's like marked for me because I'm like okay I want to know what his tips are for writing humor so I think you can search out craft stuff just like you know with any element for sure 
Um, let me see if we have any other questions that have popped up. We ha did have a comment. Crystal has said, you all have been so cute to watch. I've smiled a lot listening in. So joining us, Eric, you're cute. We are adorable. Take your Wednesday night with us. <laughs> it's Wednesday, right? I have forgotten what day it is. I, I can't keep track this week for some reason. Like it's absolutely bananas. I don't even know what, what year it is at this point. It's still 2020. Um, it's still 2020. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I hope it's not. Real. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it feels like it. We're, we're all in one uh, Groundhog Day answer. movie <laughs> over and over. Speaking of comedy, um, that's an excellent, excellent movie oh, on yeah. comedy. If you what like, movie? need Groundhog Day. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I mean, like it does all the jokes. It's got dad jokes. It's got morbid jokes. Like, right? I mean, anyway. Um. So why don't we spend a few minutes, and you can tell everybody what's coming up next for you, as far as if you've got a new release out or if you've got a book coming out sometime soon. Tell us a little bit about your book, and then at the very end. I have a dad joke I want to share. Eric, you have a dad joke you want to share? <laughs> Anybody else have a joke you want to share at the very end? We will uh, throw them in there. So Melanie, why don't you tell us a little bit what, about what's coming up next for you? Uh, yeah, so I actually have a release coming on March 1st. It is part of a box set. It is um, the se A Season for Love is the name of the box set, and it's pre-order 99 cents right now. So go grab it because it's cheap now. Um, it is my debut seasoned romance, which means it's featuring characters in their 40s and up. So that was a delight. Um, the name of my story is called That's What She Shed. So speaking of humor, <laughs> I took That's What She Said and um, it's yes, about a, a she shed. Uh, so that's what she shed. And there is a scene in this book that made my beta readers um, they, they said they were crying. They were laughing so hard. It involves a, um, a tool that um, is, um, well, it's, 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 it's a vibrator. That's what I'm going to say. So. <laughs> uh, and it leads to some very humorous, um, some, some very funny things happen. So. Uh, so that's March 1st. And then as far as my next rom com, the follow up to Too Good to Be Real, there's my kleptomaniac seagull stealing a bikini right there. <laughs> that was the only thing I told them they had to put on the cover was Clyde stealing the c c the bikini because it's Bonnie and Clyde, the seagulls, because they're, you know. Anyway, so so the next one, Too Wrong to Be Right, should be out right around the time Coastal Magic 2023 happens. So that will be... That would be very, very nice if it all works out like that. <laughs> we can talk to talk about it in person. Yeah, exactly. Kate, what you got coming? Um, so my latest one mentioned was Wild Cowboy Wolf. Um, I also had a anthology come out in December that was the Shifters in Mistletoe anthology. Look at how thick that paperback is. <laughs> It's like 800 Those pages. anthologies are some thick books. Yes. It is. It's like super fit thick. So it's all like um, holiday shifter stories. So if you're still feeling like reading holiday romance, you can grab that. Um, and then my next release is uh, Cowboy Wolf Outlaw. That's book six in the Seven Rain Shifter series. Um, it's the final one in the series. And that one comes out on June 28th. Eric? Uh, yeah, I just recently had the sixth book in my Steamborn series release It's called Sky Sworn. So if you're not caught up with that, go get caught up with that. I just finished writing the seventh book in that series called Stormborn. It's up for pre-order now. Um, I hope to have that edited and whatnot in the next few months. And probably the next release I'll have is actually going to be Vesic Book 20. And that is called Garden Gnome Graves. <laughs> <laughs> I love the title. I I, Garden of South Clarice. And congratulations on book 20 in a series. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I cheated. Some of them are novellas. So. <laughs> I mean, that's still, that's a lot of words it's in still. one world. It yeah. is. It's over a million in that series now. Wow. So, yeah. That's really impressive. It's crazy. But yeah, and then uh, the, the final four Mason Dixon novellas will be out. I don't know when they'll be out actually. They're with the editor or the publisher now and they are 
being edited and hopefully late this year, early next year, we'll see those last four roll out. All right. So if somebody wanted to follow you on social media for news and updates and general life things, where's the best place they can find you? Slash Eric R. Asher, wherever. Eric R. Asher .com, Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok yet. I haven't started TikTok yet, so not there. But Instagram and Facebook, you can find me at Eric R. Asher. <laughs> Great. Um, so readers can, I always say, sign up for my newsletter, right? Um, they can go to kateballinger.com and do that. Um, you can get free short stories, bonus material, that sort of thing. And I'm on most uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. But my biggest one these days is TikTok. And I'm at Kate Ballinger. Like Eric, I have a TikTok, but I've not done anything much on there yet. I think I have like one video of me talking about my Star Wars ornaments. Yes, yeah, super <laughs> amazing content over there. <laughs> um, so you can find me pretty much anywhere as well under Melanie Johnson. My spelling helps out a lot, M-E-L-O-N-I-E. -E. Um, so yeah, Melanie Johnson, um, at my website, Instagram, Twitter, or uh, also hashtag the writing lush will be me and uh, yes, and my newsletter as well. Like, that's a great one that Kate recommended. So the Writing List newsletter this year in 2022, um, every single newsletter includes a, uh, a link to a free book from another author. I have rom-coms and steamy contemporaries that re-rotate. So you're gonna get a free book with every newsletter. Nice. Excellent. Eric, dad joke? <laughs> Got me on, What's no? a dad joke? <laughs> out the first time hearing of this <laughs> <laughs> all right this is one that my dad raised us on and i to this day driving down the interstate and a bug hits the windshield i still think it every time i bet he doesn't have the guts to do that again i have a similar one to that <laughs> i grew up with my, with my parents what's the last thing to go through a bug's mind when it hits the windshield I've heard this one. Yep. Yep. Every time. And I'll still be driving down the interstate and a bug will hit my windshield. And I'm like, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time. Every time. Um, so that's it. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Um, thank you to all the virtual attendees for hanging out. Thanks, Jennifer and DeLorean and everybody else at Coastal Magic for um, pivoting here last minute. So we're doing virtual again, but at least we have something. It's better than not seeing your faces at all, I'm sure. Um, hang out for the rest of our 10th anniversary weekend. We've got a bunch of virtual content happening. Um, go to the Coastal Magic Convention Facebook page for all of that information. And I will see you guys online shortly. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Yes, thanks for joining us, and thanks for having us. <laughs>